Okay, so the webinar can start. So hello everybody. This is uh, Lubos Pirkel from CFD Support. And I would like to welcome you to the webinar on Turbo Machinery CFD. Uh, in today's webinar, we would like to introduce the new version of Turbo Machinery CFD. It will be 18.02. We will release it next week. And yeah, I hope everything works well. I mean the techniques. In case of any technical problems, feel free to contact us in the future and we will gladly answer all your questions and comments. Uh, the webinar is being recorded. Its recording will be made available on our YouTube channel. And it's this is, I guess this is pretty it. So I think we can get to the action. So uh, Please let me first introduce the webinar speakers. So there will be me. My name is Lubos Perkel. I'm co-founder of CFD Support. And at the time being, my current position is telling the world about, about CFD Support and what we do for you. And together with me is, guess who it is? It's Radek Matza. Radek is our head engineer and senior developer here at CFD Support, and he will take care of the technical part of today's webinar. Uh, hello, Radek. Hello, Lubos, and hello to everyone. Yes, yeah, so how are you, Radek? How are you today? Yeah, I, I am very fine, and I'm looking forward for my part of today's webinar, so I don't want to, to make a big delay, so please. Go ahead okay. and continue. <laughs> no, no, not that easy, not that easy. So how are you? So are you fine? And uh, are you ready for the webinar? You are. And OK, so let's do that. Uh, so OK, so about the webinar program, maybe I think we can we can switch the camera off for now. So we will get back you know, for at the end. So switch the camera off. OK. Um, so about the webinar program, so the, the webinar is going to take one hour. There will be three parts in the webinar. In the first part, uh, I will give a general introduction to Turbo Machinery CFD. I'm going to point out the main Turbo Machinery CFD features and benefits. Uh, in the second part, uh, Radek is going to show you the new features uh, of Turbo Machinery CFD 18.02. And in the last part, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. Feel free to put your questions. There is a special window for it. Some questions will be answered still during the webinar. The rest will be answered via email. But anyway, all, all the questions will be, will be answered. So take your chance to put your questions and we will gladly, gladly deliver the answers. So this is the program. Uh, yeah, so please let me start with the introduction. So, uh, but first about the CFD support. So, CFD support is a private engineering company dealing with mainly with all the all the projects across the CFD field. We are located in Prague, Czech Republic, and we are used to deliver complete consultancy projects, as well as we deliver extensive open form training and consultancy. And also, we do quite a lot of open form support and custom code development. And of course, our flagship product is Turbo Machinery CFD, which brings me to Turbo Machinery CFD. So please let me give a brief, brief description. What is Turbo Machinery CFD? So Turbo Machinery CFD is a CFD workflow or CFD software or CFD code. It was designed for simulating rotating machinery, like all of them. So like uh, compressors, fans, uh, turbines, uh, pumps, hydro turbines or turbochargers, uh, both radial and axial machines, both incompressible and compressible fluid flows. Uh, turbo machine CFD is pretty comprehensive, so it includes everything or all the tools you need for for simulations of, of rotating machinery. And also Turbo Machinery CFD is focused to to deliver the added value 
it means it's focused for, for it produces real results for the for the real engineers and and allow the the designers and engineers to to dedicate their time to to their real value added time and and work so that's that's our it's that's our mission uh Russia cfd this is quite important is developed in a special way it's First of all, it's it's complete workflow. It covers all the engineering steps from the pre-processing to the simulation run and detailed post-processing of the results. It's fully automated. It's independent on any other software. And on the other hand, it's fully compatible with other software. So it's it can be easily used to, together with, with other software like design software or, or optimization software or uh, whatever uh, and uh, it's designed that way that the user simply puts the data in turbo machinery cfd does its job and later it writes the results down to the report and the user can read the results and that's it and the the best thing on all of that is that Turbo CFD can be used as a black box, and also it can be used as a fully sophisticated CFD code uh, at the same time, where, where all the options are open. So this is this is really important. So 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 the beauty of Turbo CFD is that it, it's the user it's the user who decides how deep to dive into the into the problem uh, of cfd so it can be used either as a black box or it can be used as a fully sophisticated and flexible cfd tool where, where all the options uh, can be can be set tested and evaluated uh, okay uh, so please now let me let me put just a quick review of unique value of turbo machine cfd so we, we believe Turbo Machine CFD is unique, at least for, for reasons. I will quickly go through them. So Turbo Machine CFD has no licensing policy, which means our clients can keep Turbo Machine CFD forever. They can use it for unlimited number of users, jobs, or cores. This gives the investment in Turbo Machine CFD a permanent value. And also for this reason, it means our cl clients can, can scale their CFD simulations in a really big way. Number two would be Turbomachine CFD is fully automated, which means all the workflow from, from the initial data to the final results, it, it can be, or it, it is automated, and it can be run by a single click or by a single command in, in, the, in the command line. And for this reason, Turbomachine CFD is extremely effective. Automation brings a huge uh, increase of productivity and effectivity into the CFD. Uh, number three would be, we have really good technical support we keep custom approach to every customer to every issue we never leave behind any of on any of our clients we are very flexible in it we support our clients even in matters out of turbo machinery field for example in numerical mathematics physics cfd it or even software engineering and the last one would be the, the real tutorials are included. Currently, we have 16 tutorials included in Turbo Machine CFD. And the user has no doubts uh, about the best practice settings, uh, or he can, he can start, start working smoothly because the, the best practice settings is included in, in, the, in those tutorials with Turbo Machine CFD. Those tutorials are real, real machines, existing machines, which were simulated many times and and it gives a good starting point, start point to 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 any any user. Uh, there are many many other benefits of using Turbo Machine CFD. I'm not gonna go for all of them. I think this is this is enough. I have a few more technical details. I will again I will just mention them in not not very much in detail, but to, to let you know. So Turbo Machine CFD is available for Windows and as well. For Linux, the, the workflow is exactly the same. There is included graphical interface. So nowadays, 100% of, of work is done in graphical interface. So no need to, to run a command, anything in command line, only if you want it. Uh, there is automation, automated 
meshing system included into mesh CFD based on snappy hex mesh uh, of open foam you can of course you can load an external mesh if you have one yeah the real tutorials are included there is now 16 of 16 tutorials um, the workflow is scriptable in python so it's extremely flexible and it can be used uh, with any other tools you you are used to we have developed special turbo post processing there is very very effective runtime reporting uh, feature you can you can you can see the report anytime during the simulation every simulation has its report so you can always get back to the results you 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 always know where you are there is pretty extensive documentation of the machine cfd there, are, there is a pretty detailed manual and videos and finally very important information is uh, our development or development of turbo machine cfd is users driven which means our our users can tell us what they need what they would like to see in turbo machine cfd and and very very likely we we put it to the to the to the next version so we we always hear our customers and we we develop according to their their wishes yeah and I'm nearly done, so yeah, a little bit about uh, how to get Turbo Machine CFD. So the trial version of Turbo Machine CFD is available to anyone for 30 days. So anyone can try Turbo Machine CFD for 30, day, for 30 days. The full version, really to have a look uh, how, how it works, to make sure it, it does everything uh, you need, and after that, he or she can decide to to go go for it or not. Uh, about the business model, because because the business model is quite special or and unique. So Turbulence CFD is always perpetual. So it's always perpetual. So the users can keep it forever. And uh, what is paid for, in fact, with Turbulence CFD is the delivery, is the first delivery and later technical support and maintenance and updates of it. We have very, very good conditions for universities and private organizations pay a little bit more, but we still believe the machine CFD is extremely effective and very affordable CFD tool, which includes a huge amount of, of value and also ROI. Uh, okay, so this is from me for now. And now I would like to ask Radek. Radek, are you ready for your part of the presentation? Yes, 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 I am. I am ready. So you can you can give me your presentation. Okay. Okay. So screen. I guess yes, sure. So I guess mm -hmm. I, I'm switch. I make you an organizer right now. And here you go. It's it's yours. Show my screen. Okay, okay. So Lubos, can you see my screen? Great. Okay, perfect. So hello, hello to everyone. So now we are coming to the technical part of this of today's webinar. So let me let me run the slideshow. All right, which is not in the full screen mode. All right. Yeah, here, right. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so I prepared this this presentation just to show you what we have developed for 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 the upcoming new version 18.02. And so I will go through all of them, and for some of them I will show you some live example or or live usage of the particular feature we have developed. So what is new? in TCFD. So during the development process, we, we were focusing on the improvement on intuitiveness and which means we focused on to make the graphical user interface more user-friendly and more intuitive for, for, the, for the daily usage, which means we have developed new preprocessing features. The biggest one the biggest one could be the direct import of external MSH files. So now the import of any or mesh from any any 
meshing meshing tool or meshing software is really simple and straightforward it can be imported both in the ASCII or binary format so now it, it really improves the usability of TCFD we also improve the simulation setup itself so it means we we created so-called a case setup setup check button using which you can check for for possible inconsistent in, inconsistencies in your setup and it will warn you what what is set wrong or what should be should be added to successful run or to to run successfully the CFD simulation so one of them could be also the unit options so now you can you can set or post process the variable in your favorite unit and of course we developed some post processing features for example we added the excel force evaluation automatically to the report the profile path of velocities temperatures and pressure and total pressure so you will see this profile path automatically in the in the report at the end of the simulation for example we have, we have also developed a compare report which is really useful for example for sensitivity study to compare to compare uh, simulation for different meshes for different uh, uh, solver or uh, solver solver or order or or for different initial and boundary con conditions okay so let's say this is the list and this is the outline of of today's technical part so i will move i will move to the next slide yes so this is this so first of all what i would like to mention is that we have devel developed a new type propeller which is used now for simulation of open propellers in general but it was developed mainly for for the it's a maritime application basically for for the for the ship hulls simulation with the propeller so now we can evaluate the performance of such a such a geometries it can be also applied to the open propellers like wind turbines and etc so basically the setup is very simple so i have my yeah so this this is the setup of, of this uh, ship hull resistance and the propeller performance so basically here in the machine type we have the new type propeller which you pick up then in I, I, this webinar is not uh, it's not focused on the on the whole methodology because i would like to show you new features just new features but in the future in upcoming webinars we will show the full methodology for, for the particular machine well so the setup is now very simple we have here we have three components so the big one with the fluid uh, fluid region then the, the third uh, the second component among the among the propeller and of course the third component just with just with with the propeller so maybe i will just show different view yeah this is the slice so this is the basic setup here we have on this green region we applied the rotation and at the end we can study and see see everything what we get from from the simulation in the report then there is automatically evaluated performance curve and many others many others uh, variables and post-processing formulas which is directly connected to the evaluation of this of this type of of geometry so this is the open geometry type go back here okay somewhere where is my uh, okay the full screen is disabled automatically is somewhere okay okay i don't see well, well, well. all right so 
screen mode yeah here okay so there is no shortcut for that okay never mind never mind so so the next one is the similar type the stutter just for simulation the stutter geometries because in the previous version there was only types for for the rotational geometry for the turbo machinery so now we we will introduce the new type stop stator using which you can simulate any any geometry without without the rotation one of example could be just this manifold geometry or any piping or even some external 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 uh, simulation and etc now the check setup button so in the graphical user interface during the setuping process you can anytime check if your setup is is correct and if there is no mistake or no inconsistency in the setup so for example i can open here this is the example of francis turbine geometry and francis turbine simulation so in the general menu here you will you can see the check setup so i can anytime click on it and here in the output message i will get the information that the case setup is okay for now but for example if i go for physics and i would like to simulate the water turbine in compressible mode and i check it so it tells me that water turbine flow must always be incompressible yeah so this is not a consistent setup for for the water turbines and this you can this you can click and on this button anytime during the setuping process which is really nice and user friendly so you don't you don't forget to set any compulsory compulsory uh, item in the in, in in this menu or in these yeah men menus all right so this is the case case uh, setup the more units option so for almost uh, all all parameters you can set or you can pick your favorite favorite units so i can for example just start from scratch so i will open the new turbo machine cfd and now for example i can use some fun geometry let's say so i will go for my geometry for this webinar which i have saved in my uh, home folder new features webinar and let's say i will use this axial fun which is a simple geometry of the axial fun and yeah, i can save it as my setup yes i want, want to replace it and um Oh, la, la. okay and for example if i go for for the physics you can see and i don't want to use the fluid defaults i can pick for example the reference pressure in atmos in the atmosphere units or i can go for pascals and set some reference pressure which i would like to set so you can always set set it here if i go further further in the post processing menu you can do the same to choose the units for the report so if you would like to see in the report the pascal uh, pressure in pascals or in atmosphere atmosphere units or in bars you can set it here the same holds for for the mass flows or volumetric flows some uh, us units and so on so this can be done now uh, and so the next next feature i would like to show you is this is this, this important one the msh machine board so this is a really cool feature which helps a lot to import any mesh in the msh format so i can go for components let's say here in the geometry source you can you can set which geometry you would like to use so the stls for 
for the automatic meshing inside the TCV or external open flow mesh or external fluent mesh. So I will choose the external fluent mesh and somewhere here, which is axial not here, but I will go for this axial fund simple. And here in mesh, here I, I have the MSH file, so fundstage.msh. And now <clears throat> the, the mesh is automatically loaded if there are more regions, so usually for rotor and stator, so you can set which region to, to set. Now I can click on apply. Here click this eye icon to visualize the geometry and the mesh. Oh, sorry, this one. So this is the mesh I have just imported. And then we can set the classical, just assign the boundary condition and type of walls for for each part of the geometry. So let's say for blade, I can set that is the blade. So this is a standard standard approach. <clears throat> and again, if I would like to finish or to load both components, so I will adhere the number of components to two <clears throat> and do the, do the same approach. So now I need to set the stator component. I can click on apply and <clears throat> the whole mesh is loaded. So it is really nice now without any any boring <clears throat> additional additional work to convert a message to open form. So now it can be directly loaded. <clears throat> so the next step, or the, ne ne the next feature we have developed is the meshing setup visualization. So let's say this is the second option how to import how to set the computational mesh. First one was this external mesh load. And, and the second one is to use just surface geometry and define the mesh directly in TCFD. Well, so I can I I can open the tutorial for, for such a case, which is this Excel fund segment, so I will open it. <clears throat> so now the STL geometry is, is loaded, perfect. So now this is not the geometry, the computational geometry. In this case, I have just the input STLs using which I will define or using which the mesh, computational mesh is defined with the snap hex mesh and the particular setup is here. <clears throat> so who are familiar, we just do the same approach as for external mesh, but we but we have to add the parameters of the cell size for each part of the geometry. And of course the the <clears throat> the background mesh cell size. So now what is the new feature that we can visualize the background mesh? And if you play with these values, you can make it coarser or finer, and immediately you have the feedback, and you can imagine how fine the mesh will be after the mesh is created. <clears throat> the second one is to the second approach could be to define the cylindrical mesh, which is more sensible choice for axial machines. So you can play around with, with such a type of, of the background mesh. So, <clears throat> so the cylinder ready is a parameter of, of the mesh. So I can, for example, tune the mesh with respect to this geometry. So I will, I will put it somewhere in the region of, of my, of my uh, impeller case or impeller geometry. So I will do something like this. So <clears throat> the, I, will, I will just manage it to, to, for example, have the grading towards the hub and trout, which I can manage using these parameters, this grading, okay, in the opposite direction, this <clears throat> and this. 
So now I would like to just to focus. Okay, so now you can see, okay, I will apply this. Here is a parallel camera parallel projection, which is better to, <clears throat> to see how the background mesh is aligned. Okay, so I will just a little bit. Okay, this is nice. And just to have this, <clears throat> this part of the geometry a little bit under the hub. Okay, so now, now I am satisfied. And for this background mesh, I can simply create the computational mesh. So by, <clears throat> by typing on the settings button, then on, on this TCFD icon, and now I can simply write the case to prepare everything for the simulation and for the meshing process. And after that, <clears throat> I can simply click on the build, build, um, build button with respect to the component one. So now I, I'm meshing the component one with my, with my setup. What is also a new feature is the lock directly inside the graphic user interface. So you can follow the information about what is now happening. So for those who are familiar with open foam, so we can see the famous <laughs> famous uh, utilities for when meshing, snappy X mesh, and so on. And he, he, here you can set the solver output. In so in this log you will see the particular output of any utility of any solver, and so on. So now we can see the output of the snappy X mesh meshing tool. Yeah, so in the CFD process, we see just the steps, what, what, what are happening and inside the output, solver output, we see <clears throat> any output of any solver, meshing solver or any utility which is run within the process. Okay, so meanwhile, I will go for the next feature I would like to show you. Uh, so back to the presentation. So this was the meshing set of visualization, which is really useful during the meshing process. The next feature is uh, that we add the component names to to the to the component graphs and to the component list. So anytime you can, you change the component name using which you can you can make it easily readable for other users. So which the stator is, can be named as stator and other parts can be named as you want. And this setup, when I go back or, or I, can op I can open some new, new example, for example, uh, uh, there's some mixed, the the uh, the pump with the mixed flow so i can open it to show you that this component graph and every everything is now interactive so immediately you change something it immediately appears in your in your setup window which wasn't implemented in the last version so this is my geometry if I go for components, here is my component graph. And anytime you change, for, for example, the name of the second component, component to, let's say, blah, blah, and you can see that immediately it appears here. And of course, during the connection process, because any interface of any component must be connected to, the, to, it, to its neighbor, so for example, here, if I click, the component name directly appears here. So I know that component one, which is the nozzle, should be connected to the second one, which I call blah, blah. And if I make wrong connection, you can see that it looks really wrong and there is no continuity in the component graph. So I know immediately that I should it connect to component blah, blah. So 
This is improvement <clears throat> in the component names. The next next feature is that we we add directly to the graphical user interface the more more choices for wall functions treatment. Basically, there are three now: rough, rough wall, standard wall functions, and low Reynolds wall functions. So if I go to uh, to our simple fun geometry and I go back to the setting part and inside the turbulence which is somewhere below yeah here so well i can of course choose different turbulence model and the wall treatment yeah rough walls reynolds wall functions or standard wall functions so i saw that our mesh is created so now i can i can show visualize the mesh so if I zoom it using this button, so this is our generated mesh, which follows our prescribed braiding. So for this type of geometry, it is useful and sensible to use the cylindrical background mesh. For, for the other geometry, it is more convenient to use the standard hexahedral background mesh. Okay, so we can go on. So what I have of oh, this log windows in the graphical user interface. So I already mentioned it. So you can follow follow the, the log output directly from the graphical user interface. If there is any problem, which <clears throat> which happens very rarely, <laughs> you can directly save the output, send to us, to the, our support, and we'll, we'll answer you as soon as possible usually within 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 hours okay the last or not last but not last the post processing functionalities so we improve the the report which you get directly from from any simulation so we for example edit the axial force evaluation the the path of the velocity temperature or pressure and new functionality for comparing two and more simulations so first i will start to show you some example of of the report so i can go for example here here is for example this francis tur turbine geometry this i run before the seminar so i will open it in the web browser or you can of course you can directly open it within the <clears throat> within the graphical user inter interface here are the button for for generation of such a report and then here in this window it will appear automatically at the end of the simulation but now i have opened in the web browser so this is the typical example of the of, of the automatic report generation this is the example of the segment Francis turbine simulation with the full draft tube geometry, of course. And so I will basically go what is just new. So the head and efficiency and torque is, it was also in the previous version, but now we have the axial force directly visualized in the report and the total pressure per interfaces and what is this? This is the total pressure profile. So you can see what is happening with the total pressure along your geometry. So it, this is the uh, vein stator, this is the, the this is the guide, this is the rotor, and this is the draft tube. So for any simulated points, here was eight points simulated with different conditions. So usually with different flow rates. And the same is new for the velocities. So you can see the velocity, average velocity magnitude per interfaces, and the same for temperature, but this is incompressible case, so there is no sense. There is no temperature in incompressible case. And the second one, uh, what I would like to show you is the compare report. So for example, oh, maybe I, I will postpone it 
after the next feature I would like to show you. So go back, go back for my presentation. So there are a lot of windows here now. The next feature is <clears throat> the periodic AMI interface. Honestly, it was it was implemented uh, in the current version, but it was a little bit hidden and not well tested. But now it is, and it will be fully available in the next release. So this periodic AMI is basically the AMI, which is called frozen rotor approach, which is which can be applied only for the full wheel geometry. Yeah, for for this type of the geometry, this is the example of the compressor, the radial compressor geometry. And of course you can simulate just the segment parts of it. And for these types, it can be applied as periodic AMA. So there is no need to have, uh, let's say interface to interface connection, but it can be, it can be, can be moved or some, there, there can be some rotational transformation and the connection is done with it, the periodic AMI. So this is the frozen rotor, let's say for segment parts is now available with the CFD. And for example, we run to simulation with the full wheel geometry and with the segment geometry, and then we can create a compare report. So I will do that. So I will go, I will jump to the, to my desktop to run the TCFD. And inside the paraview, there, there is a there's a function for that. So now I, I don't want to, to set up a new TCFD simulation, so I can delete it. And inside the sources, there is a TCFD compare. And now I can basically I will add two or more different reports and it it will create the the comparing report of what I will define. So I will go for my summary compressor. So here I will create the new directory. So compare report, for example, in which the, the report will be stored. So OK. And now I need to find the particular report. So it will be fast. So inside the compressor here, I have, for example, the full model simulation. So inside any any simulation, there is a report something, a folder in which the HTML file is placed. So I will load this HTML file, and the same I need to do for for the for the second second case to compare. So inside the compressor now the segment simulation and that, that is all now I will click apply so now it puts all the both both uh, reports together and is creating the new HTML report <clears throat> with both simulation inside okay then it automatically appears or at the same time, it is stored in the compare report um, directory, which I defined. And I hope I can open, okay, increase it a little bit. Okay, so I will go for 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 the file compare report, and I will open it in the web browser. And basically, you will see side by side the two reports. So nicely, I can see the geometries. I can compare. I can compare the mesh sizes. How long does it take to get the results? And compare every every graph side by side. So, for example, residuals. Because here I have just one point. So, for example, comparing efficiency and efficiency convergence. So it is better for, of course, it's better for the segment segment geometry and here's the comparison so it's, so there is the flow rates because there are there are only tiny changes so as you can see in the in the x-axis but you can see that the difference between these two simulations is about 1.2 percent and you can compare 
any any simulation using this approach maybe the better one i have done the same for yeah here for example this fun simple case for which we we showed how to create the mesh using the cylinder background mesh so i have run it with the first and second order scheme and then i compared these simulations so basically it's the same 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 geometries only the difference is that i sh i use the sec first and second order schemes and you can for for example compare the efficiency and <clears throat> the efficiency for the second order schemes is much more larger so using this compare report you can do your uh, sensitivity study or mesh sensitivity study for your geometry and so on so it is really useful you can compare more simulations there is no basically restriction for the number of 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 reports to be compared so it is really really nice yeah for for many many uh, for many graphs you can set on which interface you would like to visualize for example now i am here for example in total pressure and anytime you can click it to enlarge the graph so this this functionality were added to the to the to this report okay so i have still a few minutes so i can go ahead so this was the periodicum interface and last but not least some of other customers uh, because they, they for example are family to use only or to simulate just the funds so it is nice when we, when they start from scratch to have some <clears throat> parameters directly defined to, to their favorite parameters or, or for, to parameters they want to always or for 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 the large amount of simulation use always the same parameters so it can be changed changed in this global global file which is placed in uh, in the installation in this file and for example you can anytime change the default values so just a simple example if i go to, to my installation directory which is always open foam the number of version and inside the para view there is e, uh, etc directory and here is the file so now we can open it and see what is what are the defaults for example the machine type is fun so i can just show you that it really appears in the graphical user interface so you can see that there is a fun and for example the physics is or the simulation is set to <clears throat> one processor and the numerical order is first so now i can go for this file i can set it as for example pump and i would like to find the numerical order parameter i can switch it to second for example and for example for example processors uh processors here this one for example i have a cluster with 24 processors so now i can save it and if i open it again so it automatically loads these defaults and yeah you can see that there is a machine type pump we have 24 cores and and the numerical order is second all right so i think i i i have gone through all the features i would like to show you yes yeah, so i am some i am at the end so beside these main features what i showed you you of course we fixed some some bugs some inconsistencies in the setup some we, we deleted some some parameter which is not needed for particular machine to make it more clear and yeah so basically these are the main main changes we have done and i think yeah 
I am on time. So, so thank you for your time. And I need to need to give my presentation back to Lubos. So, Lubos, are you ready to finish the webinar? Uh, yes, I am, of course. So, thank you for this, Radek. Thank you for your presentation. I, I'll take back the the organizing. So, I guess. I guess you can see my screen now. So now it's time for your questions. So I would like to ask you, please put your questions, and we will we will just just uh, choose a few of them, and we will we will answer them uh, right here. And yeah, like, like I mentioned before, all the all, all the questions will be answered uh, either here or or later later via email. So please feel free to put your questions. And uh, yeah, uh, basically, yeah, that, that's that's what what you should do. Maybe do I? What? How many? How much time we have? It's still eight minutes to go. So I'll take a look. Yes, we have a few questions already. So the first one from Marcus Coleman. Hello, Marcus. Thank you for your question. Uh, Will it be possible to split the convergence maps uh, in the report to see convergence of each point um, in the in the one speed line separately? Oh, good. This, that's a good question. Um, so, Radek, what do you think? Can we can we uh, for sure do, do we have the data? The data are uh, maybe I can show you or, or do I show you? Do do I? Or I, you, I can. You do can that. Get Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. You can give okay, me a few. I can do that. So, so yeah. So the the data are all the data, uh, especially the the log data are located in this log run, right? And also uh, after the simulation, the some other data and especially the convergence data are located in the in this. Uh, uh, lock folder or locks folder and if I have a look I take a look uh, for example on pressure residuals I guess all of them are are pasted into into one into the one file so I have to say uh, we, we, we should yes yes that that's what, what I thought uh, all the uh, give, give me give me a second Yes, 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 yes. Four thousand eight hundred. Yes. So currently, all the all the residuals, let's say, are are pasted just one by one uh, in in one big file. But big, but we know the number of iterations, so we would need to create a script, uh, which which would be uh, a Python script, which which would be executed after the simulation, for example, and yeah we can we can let it plot but right now uh, if i wanted to do it right now i i, I can't uh, do the for example the plot the residuals for each speed line i have all of them in one of course this is just one speed line but i i can i can uh, we know that that we we can do it uh, just just how it is, but uh, it's possible. Yeah, the, the answer is it's it's possible uh, to to cut this this file. Yeah, so so what 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 next? Geoff Smith, hi Geoff. Yeah, thank you for your question. With regards to segmented periodic AMI, does this mean it's possible to run transient simulation to, simulation with a segment? Of rotational geometry, yes, yes, it it, it does. Just, I, I'll try to make this a little bit more clear. So so far, uh, we we were able to simulate uh, periodic cases like like this one. We were able to simulate them just uh, in a steady state mode, right? So we were we we used a mixing plane, the, the stage boundary condition between the interfaces. It's a special way of averaging. We 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 split the interface into uh, several equidistant intervals where we where we we make them communicate together. And so so far it was possible for just for steady state. And with periodic AMI, it's also possible to use P 
periodic cases uh, in army way because it's the interface is copied many many uh, many times or several times around and the the interface can read from it so yes now it's possible to use periodic army for transient cases at periodic cases yes that's that's the meaning so uh, you were right okay and i'll take take a look at the next question so Matthias Oster, hello Matthias. Uh, yeah, is is the 18.02 version already available? Uh, we will release the new version next week. So you, you need to wait uh, one more week and then we will deliver it to all of you who, who have it, who, who can use it. Yes. So yes, yes, yes. So the, the release is next week. Uh, and uh, Clement Leroy, hello Clement. Yeah, nice to see you. Uh, MSH files integration is great. Concerning uh, CGNS for the future, yes we do. <laughs> yes we do. We are we are for sure we will do the same with CGNS. Uh, I can't tell you when. I guess it's gonna be yeah uh, during this year. I guess. But but anyway, the manual way for CGNS is possible already. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Sounds good. Yes. Uh, it's it's manual way is possible already, but it is like native read, reading of 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 the format is not ready yet. But we we for sure it's it's very very at the top of our to do list, so we can expect it. I guess still this year, perhaps. You know, we release three times a year, so during during the 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 spring release or. Uh, in October, let's let's see what 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 we can do with it. But it's very at the top of 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 our, our list of our priorities. And I guess there's gonna be I guess the last uh, question. What program uh, from Juan David uh, Alzate? Uh, hello, what program have you used for meshing generation? It, this is good question. Uh, I'd like to uh, make clear that. Uh, open form, uh, uh, excuse me, to machine CFD uses, it has its automated meshing tool, which is based on snappy hex mesh, right? So it's it's the first choice for, especially for those who have not uh, uh, a meshing tool software already. So there is automated meshing tool based on snappy hex mesh, and the input is the surface geometry. But of course, uh, many other users ask us uh, uh, for for a chance to import the mesh. So so now you can import an existing mesh uh, in an MSH format no, native natively to machine CFD can read it, or you need to convert your existing mesh to to open form format and then to machine CFD can read it. So you can either load the external mesh. Or you can you can use automated uh, tool, so it's it's you have basically these these options, and yeah. So I hope I I answered this. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think I think this is this is it. I think this is it. So let's let's push the camera on. It's uh, us again. Yeah. And I think this is it from us today. So thank you for watching us. Thank you for being with us. Feel free to contact us anytime in the future. Feel free to contact us at info at CV support or myself or Radek and we will gladly answer all your questions. It's our job and also a pleasure. We like our job and we, we like it to, to, to do. So thank you for coming. Uh, Radek, is there anything else to say? I just want to say thank you for watching. And if you have any question, any comments, any problem, you can contact us in me immediately. We are really flexible. We are we are looking forward to to any problem, any facing problem. We would like to to help you with everything. We all of us are enthusiastic CFD guys, and we. Yeah, we are here for you and we are looking forward for the, the cooperation and for the new 
possible cooperation with the with the new users and new customers. So thank you very much, and stay in touch in the future. So, okay. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you for your time. Bye bye. Yes. Bye bye. Yeah. Let's keep in touch.